I'm going to now start reading out some questions. There is um, uh, there are two questions relating to change management. Um, do you agree that AI needs to be implemented via formal change management and a qualified project management rather than treated as a technology initiative? Yes, yeah, so that goes back exactly to what I was saying. Um, it's got to be, you've got to have, you know, a separate team that looks at the change management and leadership. That goes back to what I'm saying in, you know, our thoughts dictate our actions and dictates our destination. If you've got if, you, if, you, if your thoughts aren't great, you're traditionally just going to act badly and, and essentially land in a not so great place. But if you've got a sound team, call it a project manager, call it a change leader, I don't care what you call it. But as long as you've got someone that's part of this change or this digital transformation, organizational change, uh, business transformation, as long as you've got a team of people that's sufficient to make it through the organization to ensure that they are thinking better, you're not gonna succeed. Because why should I help you if you treat me badly, I don't like my boss, I get home, I've, you know, I've got all sorts of issues at home, I come to work the next day and I'm sitting there thinking, well, you know, there is gonna be a restructure here, I might be out of work, I'm a bit worried, I don't wanna, sort of upset the apple cart, I don't want to do anything. You've got to have the right people with the right heart. It's heart. Uh, you know, the well-laid plans of, of, of men and women are with the head, but the execution is with the heart. If the heart isn't there, don't bother, because no one's going to support it. And, and that to me is the number one issue in an organization. Tell us about so heart on the one side, brain on the other side, or, or how your motherboard is wired. Do you think the education gap in South Africa, do you, do you think that's a constraining factor? Not at all. Ty, you know, the, the, the beauty about this is I walk across organizations all the time. I walk, you know, into the departments where I, I call it the coal face, where the guards have rolled up their sleeves, you're in the teams that, that, that you know, it could be the lowest of the low in terms of that pyramid sitting in the organization. And, the, you know, you'll have people in that organization go, oh, we just got the wrong guys here. The wrong dudes are in this place and the wrong women. They, you know, they're just, not, they're just not the right people. And I sit there and I go, I'm sorry, I can get someone trained up in, in, in artificial, in, in, in basic robotics in less than three months. You know, you don't need, you, you can get, you can grow your people. You know, I look at all the state-owned entities around the place. I look at, all, you know, everyone, the minute you speak to anyone, oh, they're 400% oversubscribed, this, that, the other, it's a people issue, blah, 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 the unions carry on, this is going, great. When I address the unions, and I've addressed them a lot, at Anglo and at SAA, when I sit there and I say to the guys, how do you, if, if I can teach you something new, and I can show you and bring you along on this journey, some of the guys aren't, some of them don't even have a matric. I, I'm not interested. If, if they've got the right attitude, you can bring them on the journey. I've seen guys in organizations. I didn't need, you know, some clever person from somewhere else to come and tell you how to, to change a business. Yes, from a strategy perspective, you might need changes, but you need to bring those people on the journey. You, 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 in order to, to, to get them onto the sort of digital capability that you need for the start, I haven't met one business that doesn't have the right people in the business, SAA included. There is a question here on financing of these technologies, and there's an observation made, and I can only second that, that these technologies are blue prism, automation anywhere, etc. They're very expensive. They're very costly. And the question asked, therefore, is what, do you, what are your views on open source solutions? Kudos to the guy who, or, or lady who asked the question. Uh, it's a good question. Um, you are part of Automation Anywhere and Blue Prism are not expensive if you go back to what I was saying. You know, they are expensive if you look at it at face value. You know, when they come and give you a quote and, or you've got a, a reseller of it in terms of, you know, providing the software and the, and the consulting fee coming along and giving you a quote, it's expensive. But if you don't have the right conversation with them, uh, it, 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 I wouldn't do it. So what you need to do is you need to have the right conversation. The right conversation is critical mass, lots of processes, 
suddenly prices come down. It's like any big deal negotiation. If you're bringing a lot to the table, prices fall. If you're going open source and stuff, fine. If you can do it in that way, it depends on the size of the business. Understand a lot of the executives in these big companies, and I say this with reserve, you know, a lot of people always say to me, why would you go with an expensive ERP? Uh, because no one ever got fired for implementing an expensive ERP because, you know, it's tried and tested. It's been around the world here, there, and everywhere. Blue Prism, UI path and automation anywhere, those are your Gartner best three. So if you want to sit there and say to your guys, let's look at a, you know, what's tried and tested, what's quality, what's going to give a bit of comfort around the organization. Fine. In the big banks, I know some of, I speak to a couple of the people there. Yes, they want to, it is expensive. They want to try other things, you know, but I, I do believe that the, the, the approach from the start was wrong. You need to be big enough where you can then start bringing, you know, the likes of Gartner Best 3 way below um, or right down where it starts making business sense. But I've got, no, you know, I can't say I'm totally against anything in the open source. I'm just sitting there saying, well, you know, if, if I'm a guy sitting at the top of the organization, let's assume I was the CEO of a FTSE 100 company, um, I certainly don't want to be fired because uh, I chose something that wasn't tried and tested. And it, it you know, it, it, you know, it, you, you've got to, you've got to try and say, well, what's going to, what's good, what's been tried and tested, and how are we going to actually bring this into a, an acceptable line of cost, and and then show the benefits of it. Two more questions here. One is a personal question around your your observations or your your career path from from economist to, to accountant to doing what you're doing now and what the insights are and the learnings are and, and your, your, how it's shaped your attitude towards technology and change management. And the other one is around your projects. Can you give us some uh, succinct examples of successful project implementation, uh, what the outcomes were? Maybe you have one or two use cases or examples. You know, it's the same. It's the same. If, if I think about... I'm 45 today. If I think when I was 35, um, yeah, I was a, a chief financial officer um, in an organization. Um, I had a sort of tunnel vision in terms of what I was doing. Um, I, I absolutely believed that the finances of the organization were the most important thing uh, and that, you know, um, the, the P&L said it all. Um, and, and eventually over time, um, you know, I, I worked myself into an absolute state. Um, you know, I don't know, I, I can give you a bit of a, a picture. I, I got to a state, a physical state uh, of, of, of ill health. Uh, and it just, I actually just wasn't, you know, I, I was near death. So the reality is, is that you can, you can have a mindset of being in an organization and focusing on providing the most beautiful financial statements and with the worst systems and lots of Excel and lots of everything else that goes on and lots of SQL scripting and carrying on. You can, you can go and do all that and believe that that's your, your, your value proposition. And, and, and that's good. I'm not saying it's bad for anyone who's making sure you need good finance people. But in my mind, when I was doing it, I was dying inside. So what I had to do is I had to sit there and, and, and I looked around the organization and I saw lots of other people dying. And I sat there and I thought, well, you know, uh, I've at the time had a, um, a three-year-old baby. Uh, I, I never got to see him. Uh, it, 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 it absolutely ruined my life. So I sat there and I thought to myself, well, I'm not going to stand for this anymore. I have to go into an organization and I have to, it's about the people. It's, it's about, in that organization, you want to change the organization for the people, not for the profit. It wasn't, you know, I looked at a, at a, at a global organization and I sit there and I say, guys, sure, you made X, Y, Z billion profit this year. Um, but essentially, the people weren't happy. Or essentially, there were, there, there, there were breakdowns. Or essentially, it was to sit there and say, how do you serve the people of that organization? And that was my driver. I was sitting there going, I want to step out of the finance role, and I want to step into a role that's going to be transformative. Because I can tell you something, to transform the way you think and the way you behave um, is probably the most important thing in any organization. 
So, and, and that's kind of where I thought, well, how, how do you make people's lives better quickly? It involves technology. It's like we used to ride on horses and then we got a motor car. It's, it's you know, you made life better. Um, you, you, you know, it, it, it thing, so you've got to, you've got to try to figure out how you're going to change people's lives. And a lot of that time you, you, you deal with a lot of individuals in an organization. You might deal with narcissists. I mean, it, you, know, you might have a narcissistic personality in the organization. You have to deal with it. And, and, and in dealing with that, you have to take it head on. You can't hide behind the wall and skip 50 yards away and carry on. You, you, have, to, you, you have to take it on. Um, and, and in those organizations, um, if you're not doing that, um, you're not going to see the change you need. And essentially what's going to happen is, is three years down the line, uh, everyone's going to have the next executive team sitting at the C-suite level, and they'll essentially be delivering the same plan that was delivered five years ago, and they won't execute that plan either. Can you, the last question, can you give us an example of where you sort of successfully, uh, according to your standards and, and, and worldview, where you successfully implemented RPA and where it sort of tangibly um, improved the lives of the employees? Yeah. So at, in, in terms of revenue uplift, uh, I've done a lot in terms of, uh, you know, a lot of guys are sitting, looking at data cubes in an organization and they've, um, they will be probably irritating the CIO and, 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 his, and his team no end trying to get data into these data cubes in order for sort of executive decisions to be made. This was essentially placing robots uh, on, the, on that data, doing cross-sell and upsell opportunities. In other words, what would take weeks of putting data together, finding relationships, having sort of analysts and accountants sort of... Uh, uh, doing analytics on this data, you could actually pre-program robotics to go ahead and do this kind of thing for you. Those revenue uplifts are worth more, within a period of six months, worth more than 200 million rand in terms of just reconciliation. So a lot of people talk about the finance part of things. I don't like to talk about the finance side of things, purely and simply because I think finance is the last part that should be robotized. But in terms of high volume repetitive reconciliations, you know, in terms of the ERPs that you look at across organizations, um, if you look inside those ERPs, most of what accountants do in terms of the laborious work is the matching of debits and credits and clearing. And what you can do is there's lots of tools out there to do it. I mean, there's Blackline, there's all these types of tools that cost a lot of money. But the reality is, is inside the ERP is that there are switches that you can switch on for automatic clearing. But you've got to make sure they're on. Secondly, in terms of the sort of inputs to clear depending on the data that's sitting on there, there's only so many rules and permutations that are sitting and available within that ERP. Anything outside of that ERP has to be then done additionally. And that's where robotics can come in. So you can code up a, a, a robot, extract the information from the ERP after it's run its process of clearing, go and reconnect in terms of the new scripts that you've given it to go and clear data, push it back into the ERP, extract that information and push it out by email to whoever's looking at it in terms of uh, a reconciliation in terms of open line item. It could also do the same thing across an external statement and your ERP. It could be something across a piece of uh, a, a, a document like a delivery note where you're doing a three-way match between an invoice, a delivery note, and a purchase order. It could replace, for example, SAP Ariba, which does that kind of thing, where organizations, and, and not only SAP Ariba, you can talk X3, you can talk Oracle, they've all got their same procure-to-pay system. Those, kind, those are the type of issues that you can do. I look at it in terms of blockchain. People are talking about a blockchain. I'm not talking cryptocurrencies. I'm talking a closed blockchain. Where people are sitting there saying, well, oh, we've got this blockchain technology. You can create your own blockchain in your business, far cheaper than any blockchain technology. And that, that blockchain technology can be, can be populated with robotics. I mean, I'll give you an example, the most simple example in the world. If you and I, Ty, are interacting. In fact, you, you, everyone on this call is interacting with me, and there's, 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 there's transactional flow between all of us, all of you with me. You've got the ability to view the transactions in my books, and I've got the, trans the, the ability to, to, to view the transactions in your books, but you can't see each other's. And, and those, rea you know, those things are, are, are fairly quickly to implement. So yes, there's all around the sort of revenue uplift uh, in terms of um, cross-sell and upsell opportunities, and in terms of fraud.
So I've done a lot of stuff in terms of fraud, where, you, where you're using robotics. I know there's, soft, there's software out there that does much the same thing, but you can do it cheaper with robotics and AI in terms of identifying possible fraud in your business and fraud, actual fraud. That, that's, that's very good, Paul. Thank you very much. Uh, our next session is going to look at AI. So I think this was a lot about robotics. The next session in, in a week or two from now, we'll look at some use cases in artificial intelligence. So Paul, thank you very much for your time, for, for your generous sharing. So I'd like to th really thank you for the hour and 10 minutes that you invested here. I hope it was worth your time, but we certainly learned a lot. Um, thank you very much for all your insights. And I realize it's a, it's a massive topic. There's still a lot that could be spoken about and discussed. We will send you, as I said, we'll send you the information and you can comment on this uh, presentation. Uh, here's a QR code. You can do that straight away uh, off your phone or when we send you the presentation, you can do it off a link. And all we are certain of today is that everything is changing. Our value is not in the mastery of things of the past, but really in being agile today and adapting to the future and getting ready for tomorrow. So with those words, I'd like to thank you very much. And thank you very much, Paul. Uh, thanks to the audience. Until we meet again. Bye now.